<laughs> We're gonna walk over to the high school. There's blue ribbons. Check them out. Um, there's one. And another one, and another one. Autism awareness month. Light it up blue. So we're walking up to the high school, which is adjacent to the elementary school, where Mallory went to grade nine, nine to 12. Yes. And um, someone was asleep at the wheel. They were. When I got my transcripts and I, I was looking at them, yeah. it said I had no uh, tardies or oh. anything for my freshman Your year. Your record was expunged. <laughs> my freshman year, it was like no tardies, oh nothing. Like, and I'm like, every day I was late. That is hilarious. Some... Hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, this high school is like a really high achieving academic high school. So even with an IEP, I don't fall off the curb. Even with an IEP, um, they right. still had some pretty wicked standards. Is that, is that our friend? Yes, it's our friend. <laughs> so at Mallory's high school graduation, you know how the kids are really excited and they throw their cap up in the air and they couldn't be any happier? Yeah, I, I dry I, heaved and cried. You dry heaved and cried and I was ecstatic. I couldn't believe we were finally free. Oh my god. They made me crazy with those big projects you had to do. I called the teacher. I'm like, this is an enormous project. It's killing her. She can't sleep. She can't eat. She's throwing up all over the place. We can't do this. Do they care? No. No. So it finally got to the point where I do it, turn it in saying, I did it. <laughs> and they were, they were okay with that. <laughs> As opposed to adapting the, the expectations so that she could do something that she could do. So I felt a lot of anger and resentment. It's like, hell, I did this already. I can't believe I'm doing it again. <laughs> but we did tutors. Yeah. We you had your good subjects and you had your bad subjects. And the ones I was good at, you were terrified that you'd have to do the work. Oh my like God. Like chemistry. Right, but I mean, they would make you read Shakespeare and Chaucer and write papers about it. And we're just uh -uh. We're up to 11 o'clock at night saying, Valerie, <laughs> we have to go to bed. We have to get something on this piece of paper. It's crazy. So anyway, this is the track. You can show everybody the track. So that's where... I believe there was real grass in my day. Yeah, now it's astroturf. So that's where high school graduation was. And, um... I couldn't have been any happier. We get her out of the school. We don't have to struggle so much. You can do what you need to do. And I cried myself to sleep. Right. And then what surprised the hell out of me was you got depressed about it. I'm like, Mallory, I hated going up there. But what do you hate more? Change. Change. And goodbyes. Change and goodbyes. Oh, not good. So she missed her teachers who she made friends with. Because they were really my only friends. Yeah, because that's the thing with Asperger's. You were, I was just to say, you were like a five-year-old and a 45-year-old. Yeah, but you I were related never, with the little kids and the adults. Right, but you were never like pure. You yeah. didn't relate to your peers. You didn't like what they were doing. You thought all of the crazy behavior, getting drunk and, and being dating. promiscuous, you thought that was just ridiculous. Yes, it's so disgusting. There was 45-year-old Mal, but then you would watch Teletubbies. But the, then I'd volunteer with the special needs preschool class. Right, push them out of the way and do their coloring. Yes. <laughs> Nothing made you happier than no. coloring. So um, it's quite a dichotomy to be 45 and 5 <laughs> and not to be in your age group. So therefore, she didn't relate to peers. So you didn't do dances, you didn't do proms, football you didn't games. go to football games. You kind of were just friends with the teachers, yeah. and then you came home to Spent me. Spent a lot of time in the nurse's office. <laughs> Get to know the nurse. <laughs> Absolutely. And so that was um, a shock to me when she was upset. And she's like, but I miss my teachers, and I don't know what to do now. Because there's nothing. Well, that's what we didn't realize. <laughs> I was so focused on not having to do that homework anymore that I didn't realize. I'm screwed. You fall right off the precipice. It's like, what is there now? Because you're still you. You still need what you yes. need. But now there are no services. Although, you gotta remember, there's a lot more today for kids. So, than yes. when you were there. You're like the dinosaur Aspie. So for anyone who's born tomorrow, 
I guess it was autism, good for them, but. Good for them. <laughs> well, they have what a lot about easier. me? Yeah, so your age group, it's like, now what happens? Where do you go from here? So you weren't quite mature enough or your anxiety was such mm -hmm. you weren't going away to school. No, but I attempted county college. Yeah, so you tried co county college and tried it on a very small scale. Yeah. Not to be overwhelmed. Did like two one fun class and one hard class. Like a yoga and then a psychology. psychology. Yeah, so you did that for a while. Until I got sick. And then it took you longer to learn how to drive, mm -hmm. but you actually mastered it. Although, curbs. <laughs> curbs don't mean anything to Mallory. Curbs. Or, 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 or potholes. Curbs and potholes say, welcome! <laughs> Although, Come on up. I haven't hit any curbs in my new car. Well, thank God for that. And I didn't go in any moon craters yet. Good. Although, she used to regularly blow up tires by yes. ramming into the curbs. So, or rocks and <laughs> she would blow, blow up a tire and just keep like you know get out and go into the well, restaurant. I didn't hear it first of all, and we're like, Mallory, you just blew up a tire. I did. It was my grandma's yes. fault. Her well, I didn't know. Whoever was stole my parking spot. <laughs> You're just like it's all in a day. Blow up a tire. So well, anyway, what am I gonna do? I know the drill at this point. Was, right. Why well, get upset? Right. So life actually seemed pretty good for a little bit there. You were driving, you were going to school, and get this, you got a part-time job. Yes. You worked in dining services? With the elderly. And did they love you or what? Yeah, I was the play of the month for two months running. So all seemed to be going well. Kind of helped rig the system up. But, but in the name of Asperger's, what I know today is that what goes up <laughs> must come down. It's, um, to me, I'd have to explain Asperger's as like an airplane that loses altitude. It takes a, oh, a, at a very busy traffic airport where you sit on the tarmac forever waiting for the tower to clear you. So it's like, are we ever gonna go anywhere? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You get the green light to go. You're up, you're like, phew. We you barely reach a cruising altitude. And then boom, you drop 20 feet. I mean 2,000 feet. And you're like, holy crap, prepare to crash. What's going on? So I thought that these setbacks were something I could control. I could fix. I would learn all the signs, symptoms. I'd still, read you like a book. But there still wasn't like a specific pattern. No, that's the thing. There were known triggers, but then there are those nobody saw it coming. It's like an irregular menstrual cycle. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Everything's like, the planets are properly aligned. We've stood on our heads. We've walked, not stepping on the cracks. We, we ate the right foods. You're like, what the hell? And it would be unexplained, bizarro, I don't know. Like, you wouldn't even know. No. You would just be in a heap. I'm like, well, what happened? I don't know. How could you not know? I don't know. Oh, no, it happened last night. The more I'd ask you, then it would just stress you out. And then you'd go deeper into the hole. So it's like, oh, yeah. So you have to go, okay. No biggie. <laughs> we'll just. So there's tears we'll on just, my pancakes. We'll just figure this out. So as a mom, you go in your bedroom, you cry and scream into your pillow. You come out and you Meanwhile, say, I'm doing the same thing in my room. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I don't know what happened. But for me, the, the, the thing that would always unnerve me is how long are we going to be down? There was no telling. It could be a day. It could be a week. It could be five years. A month or even a year. You have... <laughs> oh, <laughs> friends. You never knew. You And Mal didn't know. No. So. She didn't know why the hell it happened in the first place. So how are you going to know when it's going to get better? No. No. So you go into what I call the code depression <laughs> because when she's down flat and life comes to a screeching halt for everybody because of what abrupt. can you do? So then everything you had planned, everything you thought you were going to do, you're like, okay, put it on hold, sister. And let's just try to see how long this takes to, to pull you out. How many? I don't want to get you wild. I know. That's easy. But anyway, so she's driving, she's going to college, she's taking um, how, like 12 hours, working 12 hours to 15 hours a week. 
life is good. And then the big crash came, the big one, in the form of Dizzy. So one day she's at work. You tell the story. Yeah, it was it was in November. <laughs> it was a cloudy day. I, I was I was well. on I was on soup duty, <laughs> serving soup. When all of a sudden I got dizzy and the room started spinning, and then. I got really nauseous and started to get shaky. So I asked my, at the time, supervisor, uh, or I told him I was dizzy and could I just like take a break and go sit down in the bathroom. And it was so bad I called you to get me, but I thought I was having really bad low blood sugar. And thought once I got home and had dinner that I would feel better, but even after eating chicken and rice and drinking a glass of orange juice, the room still was spinning. And this was the beginning of the spinning. So we went to this. This carried on for two years. Well, at first years. it was like on and off, and I was just told I had vertigo. Give it a le like a minimum of a week, and it should taper off. Then they said Meniere's disease. Because after eight days, it was still going. Yep. So then they said no. Then not ear. no. That's wrong. Then it was labyrinthitis. Labyrinthitis. It was a virus that could last up to four weeks. So I told myself, give it a month and you should feel better. A month goes by and I'm not any better. So then, because I had tinnitus, then they were questioning Meniere's, but my other symptoms didn't match Meniere's, so they didn't know. So I took her to 5,000 doctors, which really equates to five. And we got misdiagnoses from Neurologist, ENTs, um, functioning, functioning, yeah, girl like the, man, yeah, all different kinds of specialists. Misdiagnosis. So the Mallory the, and they would scare me. So meanwhile, she can't drive, she can't go to school, she can't work, she can barely eat. Yeah. Imagine how that feels with the room spinning for no less than seven days straight to 30 days straight. It was like 24/7, 365. Yeah, it was horrible. So everybody's life, and by everybody I mean you, Mallory, came to I lived in your bed. Reaching halt with a bucket. Yeah, I was like making chicken soup, saltines, holding the bucket, and just trying to rub your back. I did Reiki. I, that's the other thing. I went to become a Reiki practitioner so that I could try to help her feel better. Because when you can't get the medicines in her, and she can't go to the doctors, because um, I'm dizzy. What the hell are you gonna do? Yeah, you can't even get her there because she's so sick. So. Anyway, I did all this stuff to try to help her feel better. And then you, in desperation, turned to YouTube. YouTube. Is that sort of like the beginning of YouTube for you? No. No, you knew about YouTube before that? I used YouTube to escape reality by oh, reading fan, Jonas Brothers fan fictions. And then I would like read a thing, and then uh, it would till there was no more. So that's why I created an account, so I'd have the updated subscription, so I could continue on with these stories. Great. And then I decided one day to make my own video. Which we'll get into in a minute, but we'll finish your vestibular story. So, you actually went on YouTube and you found a doctor in Scottsdale or something? Well, I found a lot of doctors and I wrote to all of them and the one in Scottsdale got back to us. Right, but we're in New Jersey, so you can't even get her to the end of the street. How are you going to get her in Arizona? <laughs> but at least we realized there were some specialists yeah. that dealt directly with these dizzy disorders. So we found a doctor at JFK Medical Center, and I'm totally giving a shout out to him. He don't want an alpha ball to pop out. I know he tells us, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. I have more patients than I can handle. But sorry, Dr. Kramer, Dr. Philip Kramer at JFK Medical Center. You are my hero. And the hero. neuroscience department. Yeah, you are my hero, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will forever sing your praises. So it was three months to get an appointment because he sees patients from around the world. He's good. And then um, we got in, and I don't know if I ever told you this, <laughs> but I was terrified uh -huh. because I started Googling and YouTubing how do you diagnose these dizzy oh, problems. And you're thinking I'd have an MRI? Oh, no, 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 no. So that's they what were, I was thinking. They were putting people with the goggles oh, and the hitting goggles. them with strobe lights. Oh, yeah, and putting water in their ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you're going to be an astronaut. Yeah, oh, exactly. hell no. It looked like astronaut training. Remember we watched that TV show about that lady that was dizzy? Yeah. 
Yeah. She went to that specialist yes. center in Nashville. Yes. And they did those god awful things. Yes. So I pretty much said, all right, whoever you are, Dr. Philip Kramer, good luck. I don't know how we're going to do a diagnosis, but I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And we, we go into his office, and I feel like I need the barf bucket at this point because well, I'm so I had, nervous. I had already filled out like questions. Yeah, I figured, oh God, what is he going to do to her to get this diagnosis? So this lovely, quiet, gentle man He's just like, looks yeah, at yeah. us and he t we tell our little story and he said, I have a question. Because it could have been one of two things. He yeah. Said. He said, I have a question. Does the room spin clockwise or counterclockwise? And you answered? I honestly don't remember. I think it was clockwise. It's so traumatic. I think it was clockwise. And then, get this, he turns to us and he says... But he watched me walk down the hall. Well, he did his exam. Yeah. But it, at the end of the exam, it really came down to that question. And then he said, I know what this is. I looked at him. Because, you know, it's like drum roll, please. Yes. Because what is he going to say? Is he going to say, like with the diagnosis of Asperger's, it's blah, blah, live with it? Well, this, or you do have to say, manage this. It's not like the No, I, I know, but it's still way better. Yeah. Way better. So he said, it's a vestibular migraine. And I said, barely getting the words out, can you cure it? And he said, yes. And I almost jumped in his arms and kissed him. So I said, how? And he said, just a medication. It was actually an antidepressant medication, yeah. Zoloft. And he looked at us and he said, take this. We have to titrate up, start at what, 25 megs or something? Oh, that's we'll normally you what you do with those type of medications. You don't just start right. at the allotted dose. Right, so, he, so it took a couple months to get to 50. And then he said, once you're at 50, you should feel better in two weeks. And I think it was two weeks and one day or yeah. three days. But that was three weeks and one day. Oh crap. Well, you get the point. Yes. <laughs> it was one day over the day he said it was going to be. She will be better. And by God she was. And um, you cannot imagine like getting your life back after it was five years. Five well, I still years. feel like I'm trying to get my life back. Well, you are because it actually leaves you with a lot of post-traumatic stress stuff. And you've had to do a lot of um, rehab type stuff. Yeah. And you are still getting your life back, but you're a hundred million percent better than when those damn things were going on, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But I think it left both of us with PTSD. I really do. Yeah. Because that was a really bad one. And, um, oh, it, it taught me that there's a breaking point <laughs> with Mallory, an invisible line breaking point. You, you call me a potato chip. I did. I called you a potato chip because you couldn't put any weight on this child whatsoever without her breaking. So we are consciously aware of keeping your stress management under control and not overloading you. And um, but still, it's a real delicate balancing act. Yes, you ask me. It's like because spinning it's invisible. plates on a. Yeah, we don't know where that breaking point is. No. But we sure know we don't want to go anywhere near it. No. <laughs> that much we do know. So that's the story of the um, vestibular, years. vestibular years, the VY. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't recommend them. No. You don't want to do that. Uh, but there are many other medical traumas. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. Like I said before, how is it we're still alive? I don't know. <laughs> Challenges. Challenges. All right, that's enough of that topic for now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you have anything else you want to add? Uh, that's just high school. That's the high school. It's not a good <laughs> It's a very good high school. But. You killed me. Damn, I killed us all. <laughs> killed us all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. All right. Till next time.